Hi everyone, my name is Matt Dozier with the U.S. Department of Energy. We're here in Denver, Colorado for Solar Decathlon 2017. Now this is a competition where student teams from around the world uh, design and build solar-powered houses. Uh, this particular solar-powered house is designed and built by University of Nevada Las Vegas students. Uh, it's called Sinatra Living. Uh, and I'm here with one of the students uh, who was involved in designing this really incredible looking house. So uh, what's your name? My name is Nasco Balakchiev. Awesome. I'm, nice I'm to meet you. I'm the project manager for uh, Team Las Vegas. Terrific. Okay, so um, why don't you give me the sort of basic rundown of, of what we're looking at here and what makes the Sinatra Living House different from all the rest of the houses here? Sure, absolutely. So we designed this house to function specifically in the desert in uh, the hot climate. Um, it's called Sinatra Living. We wanted to appeal to our target demographic, which is uh, people aged 50, 60, and over. So that's a, that's a rising demographic in Las Vegas. We've had people at that age move to the city in the past 10 years at growing numbers. And we want to create a housing solution that really um, aids them in their physiological and psychological needs and accessibility needs as well. Right, so you guys are really looking ahead and thinking about the, uh, the people in the area where you guys live and go to school, right? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So we, we designed the house, like I said, to, to function in the desert. This is the south, the south facade. Um, and here we have our, our solar thermal units. So these are a really cool feature of the house. Uh, these, these tubes are, are filled with water, and that water inside gets hot from the sun. It evaporates, generates steam, and then that steam heats up the hot water, which is inside a tank inside this room. So all of the hot water in the house is provided through the sun. Um, it's excellent to use in Las Vegas because we don't have very many cloudy days, so it's a great system. Um, this room is also cool because it's a modular unit so you could really put this little piece right here on any house in Las Vegas and generate solar hot water. Oh wow so okay so this is like a room and you can just sort of bolt it on to a, exactly. to a house. Yep. yep. Um, so so you have solar thermal heating now do you also have solar panels? Absolutely yeah we have uh, 28 solar panels on the roof that generate uh, all of the electricity for the house. Okay, so you got you got both kinds of solar power here. Yep. You got the heat and the electricity. Absolutely. Okay, so um, why don't we start making our way inside so we can show the folks on, on Facebook uh, what you got going on in there. Um, again, welcome. This is Solar Decathlon 2017. Uh, we're here uh, at this competition where students design and build solar-powered houses. Uh, this is the University of Nevada, uh, University of Nevada Las Vegas Sinatra Living House. Um, so they're going to take us inside, show us some of the cool features on the inside of this house. That's a pretty nice uh, ride in the uh, driveway here. Is that part of the is that part of the competition? Yes. So every every team has to have an electric vehicle on site and uh, drive that as part of the contest and be able to charge the car with, uh, with the home. Okay, and is the, the Tesla uh, go with the Sinatra living lifestyle? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. So right here is the entry ramp of the house. It would actually serve as the carport once the house is back in Vegas. Right now we have the car on the side so people can tour through. Um, but this, is, this little structure right here is the charging station for the car. And if we come on through the end. All right. Oh, uh, Alexa wants to drag race, so look forward to that. Okay, so making our way up onto the deck here is a nice, spacious deck. Yeah, so we uh, we wanted to maximize the amount of, of square footage on this house. So our competition maximum is a thousand conditioned uh, livable square feet, and the f total footprint maximum is 2,700, which we hit at around 2,650. So we wanted to really extend the, uh, the, the inside outdoors and have a nice open, open deck that people can, can walk around on. And uh, over here on this side, we have our, our, our green wall. So this uses gray water from the house to feed plants. Um, terrific. Okay, and so this is very much, uh, this is a sort of space that people would use in Nevada when it's bright and sunny. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about this green wall. So this, this green wall, uh, all the gray water from the house is used to irrigate the planters here on the south and this wall as well. So you could grow plants or grow herbs or vegetables in this wall. Um, so it's an excellent way to, to reuse your water. So uh, gray water is a term that I don't know if everybody who's watching might be familiar with. So what is gray water? So gray water is, is water used throughout the house uh, that can be reused for other purposes. So for example, your, your, your washer, uh, water instead of taking that back to 
to the city lines, you can reuse it for another purpose, right? Same awesome. With your shower water, your sink water. Okay. Great, great. So you're making use of everything, you know, with the solar energy, with the reused gray water. Okay. Um, so we want to move inside? Yeah, let's take a look inside. So we have a large sliding glass door here on the south. Uh, this is actually our, our public social module, as we call it. So in here we have the dining room, the kitchen, and the living room. Um, the kitchen is designed as a linear, linear kitchen instead of an L-shaped or a U-shaped kitchen. So through our research, we figured out that this type of kitchen minimizes turning in older individuals and thus minimizes falling. The more you have to turn, the more risk you have of falling. So in this type of kitchen, you kind of start at one end and progress towards the other end as you do your, your cooking and meal preparation. Gotcha. So I'm standing in front of the, the sink and the, and the dishwasher here, got the range and then the oven. Absolutely, yeah. So this, this uh, countertop is actually designed to be able to raise and lower. Um, so you can see there's no casework underneath. So if you're in a wheelchair, you could pull up and adjust that countertop depending on what, uh, what you're, you're working on. Wow, so this whole, this whole section here lifts up and down? Yep. Mm -hmm. wow. That's amazing. Okay, cool. And then throughout here, if we move on down, this is the, the living room. So its casework is connected to the kitchen casework. So we have this really nice wall of, of storage space. That's great. Great. So continuing on. Continuing on. This is actually the seam of the house. So this house is designed as a double wide mobile home. So we tried our best to make it not look like a mobile home. And I think we've, we've done a good job at that. But yeah. We, sh we use this seam to show people that this is where the house separates into two modules. They're each built on a steel chassis. So we literally just bolt on axles to it, hook up a, a semi truck, and, and drive it out. Oh, great. So it's very portable, very modular. Yeah. Um, so for those of you just joining us, we're here at Solar Decathlon 2017 in Denver, Colorado. Uh, we're touring the Sinatra Living House from University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Um, if you have questions about the house, uh, drop them in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. Um, tell us where you're from, you know, weigh in. Uh, just give us a, we'll give you a shout out. We um, have a question? We have a question from Anne Marie. She wants to know what the hardest part of the house was to build. Okay, what was the hardest part of the house to build? <laughs> there was many, many difficult parts. Um, I think, let's see, I think figuring out probably how to make this seam between the two modules was a difficult thing to, to execute. So this wall on, on both modules had to be perfectly flat and straight in order to really create a nice and tight air seal between the two buildings. Yeah, yeah it sounds like a, a real challenge. So great question, Anne-Marie. So yeah, if anybody else has questions uh, while we're going through, um, feel free to ask them in the chat and we'll uh, get to them as we can. Um, so let's uh, move on to the next room here. So this room here is called our flex space. It serves as an office. We've found out a lot of retirees like to have an office space at home to do some sort of work from home or have a craft space. Um, now this room can also serve as an auxiliary bedroom to the house should the need for a caretaker arise or you have a family member sleeping over. Um, and then here we also have our washer and dryer, very energy efficient, Bosch fixtures, use minimal water and electricity. Uh, we have some uh, students in Minnesota and they want to know if this house would be feasible in the Minnesota winter. So, like I mentioned earlier, this house is specifically designed for Las Vegas, so our roof slope is actually very shallow. In Minnesota, you've got a lot of snow, so you'll probably need a much steeper roof, roof slope than, than this house has. So, um, with some modifications, you can apply a lot of the same principles in this house to other homes in other regions. Right, but it's going to be uh, maybe, a, maybe a little bit better suited to the, to the dry, yeah. you know, arid uh, Nevada climate. Yeah. Okay, what type of wood is being used in the house? So is that, I'm not sure if it's finished wood or, or the lumber, but the lumber in the house um, is, is laminated veneer lumber, so it's all engineered studs, and then the wood inside the actual interior space is, is pine. All right, great. Okay, so let's keep moving. Into the bathroom. So our bathroom is also designed to be fully wheelchair accessible. You'll see it's very nice and, and, and spacious. Um, underneath the sink, there's no casework, so you can roll a wheelchair in there. The shower as well is, um, is very nice and wide, so you can have a full wheelchair turning radius in there. Yeah, it's very spacious. Yep, absolutely. Uh, in the shower, we have a, a radiant towel rack. So our radiant floor system throughout the house also loops into this towel rack here, so your towel is nice and warm after your shower. 
Great. Um, so I have a question. How did you arrive at the decision to, you know, target sort of a, the aging population? What, what kind of um, thought process went into that? Sure. So, you know, in, in the solar decathlon, uh, the target market's really a, an important contest. It's only one of the 10 contests, but it's what drives your decisions towards all the other contests as well. So we wanted to, f to figure out what is an emerging market in Las Vegas that we can really offer a solution to. You know, we're all, we're all younger students, but I think the target market uh, worked out with us because we all have grandparents, we all have parents that are growing older, so we can sympathize with, with their needs. Sure. And uh, I think it was, it was a good choice. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, so uh, lead the way. Sure. So moving on to the bedroom. Um, we tried to get daylight into every room. That's a very important uh, feature for people who are aging. Their, their, their vision levels are much lower than younger people. So you can see we've got windows um, throughout every room to get daylight in. And then here is actually an open, um, open closet. So for someone in a wheelchair, it's much easier to access their clothes in this closet than having to, to deal with, with doors. Great. So um, when it came to designing these features, you know, um, obviously being younger folks yourself, um, how did you uh, recognize what were going to be the best improvements to make to accommodate uh, an aging population? Sure. So we, we actually had a really unique experience. We, we worked with uh, an ARP focus group early on in our process and met with a couple of retirement homes in Las Vegas to talk to some of the folks there about what features would be important to them to have in this house. And even when we were designing the floor plan of the house, we had you know, maybe 10 different designs, and we ran through all those designs with those people and were able to figure out which ones are going to work best. And that's how we arrived at the final floor plan of Sinatra Living. Great. So a lot of research, a lot of feedback went into it. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so anything else in the bedroom uh, that you want to show us? Uh, yeah. So uh, everywhere you look around, there's, there's a lot going on. So um, here we have some of our home automation equipment. The whole house is powered by Amazon Alexa. So you can control your lights, your thermostats, your uh, HVAC equipment, uh, your ceiling fans using, using Alexa. So all the lights are energy efficient, LED lights. Um, our AC units on the wall are really energy efficient, mini split heat pumps from Mitsubishi. So these uh, heat and cool the house. Um, above the bathroom, actually, I forgot to mention, we, we are utilizing an active air plenum with a phase change material. So there is a salt-based material inside that can take incoming fresh air. That's usually 100, 115 degrees in, in Las Vegas. And that salt-based material melts and removes the heat from the air and can, can condition it down to about 80 degrees. Wow. So the air comes in at 80 degrees, and then these uh, wall-mounted units have basically very little to do to condition it down to you know, 74, 75. Right. So it's a lot less energy yeah. needed. Yeah. Yeah. OK, cool. I have a question. Uh, what surprised you? Now what surprised what surprised you for the needs of the elderly residents? Well, I think uh, one thing we didn't think of was everyone said they wanted the bathroom really close, so that's why we have the toilet right next to the bed. Um, but that just wasn't something we thought of immediately as as students. So yeah, um, this whole thing must have been a real learning process for you. Yeah, absolutely. In many many ways. Yeah. Um, great. So um, shall we head on out to the? De oh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, one other thing that surprised me. Um, uh, we, we thought that technology would be something that they'd be afraid of using or just not comfortable with, but almost everyone we talked to, they were so excited with, with Amazon Alexa and excited to use tablets and, uh, you know, modern technology to, to make their life easier. All right, terrific. Um, so uh, as we move on here, uh, my name is Matt Dozier with the U.S. Department of Energy. We're here at Solar Decathlon 2017. It's a competition to design and build solar-powered houses. It challenges uh, student teams from universities and colleges all around the world. So we're here with the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, in the Sinatra Living Home. Um, so we can continue our, our tour back to the outside. Yep. Now we're, uh, we're on to the engineering side of things over here. Okay. So this is the west side of the home. Uh, we've minimized windows on, on, this, on this facade. In Vegas, the sun is very, very hot. You don't want to have any windows on your west side. So we do have a door, but it's a very well-insulated door. It's a, it's a European-style door, so it's got an R value of 15. Usually, doors here have you know R4 or 5, maybe. So this helps uh, minimize heat gain. Yeah, not a lot of heat getting through this. Exactly, yeah. And 
here I see something I recognize. Maybe you can tell me a little bit more uh, about what it is. Sure. So, so this is a, the home's electrical room. Um, all of our PV panels on, on top of the roof uh, go through this inverter right here. And then the energy gets stored in our, in our Tesla battery. So this battery can actually power the house for up to three days in case of a grid failure. Um, as we've talked to our target market in Las Vegas, if, uh, if there's ever a grid failure, it's a huge issue for them as they might have critical life support equipment or something of that sort. So having this type of backup system is, is very, very important to the target market. We figured this question would come in, but people yeah. want to know what is your favorite Sinatra song? And what is your favorite Sinatra song is the question. Uh, I think mine is Fly Me to the Moon. All right. Yeah. You guys are aiming, dreaming big, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, um, so, so anything yeah. else uh, about the power system? So that what, what this battery also helps us do is do some peak load shaving throughout the day in Las Vegas as utilities are more expensive in, in the late afternoon. So we can charge up the battery in the morning and use it to uh, reduce our, our energy consumption in the day. All right. Awesome. Now we can move on to the, the mechanical side. Okay. So we get to see the inside of what we were looking at at the very beginning of the broadcast uh, on the outside. Yep. So, yeah, in the, in the very beginning we saw the solar thermal units on the outside. So they heat up our hot water and transfer it to this blue tank right here. So this tank is actually a two-loop system. The lower loop goes through our radiant floor throughout the house. So all the heating in the house is done through that radiant floor. And then the upper loop is all the domestic hot water supply. Yeah, that's a it's a lot of engineering here. So uh, what were you you were you're on the communication side, right? No, I'm project manager. You're project yeah. manager. Okay, so great. So you so you I'm, I've learned a lot about communications okay. through <laughs> through project management. What about engineering? Engineering as well. Yeah. Okay, you kind of have to know everything. Yeah, I, I think what's really unique about the project is you uh, you know whether you're an architecture student or communications or marketing, you get to work with all the different disciplines and learn from them and interface and design things together, which in the real world, you don't of, often get to do that. You know, an engineer kind of works with other engineers, but they don't really interface with architects. Right. So having that sort of experience really helps create this project and uh, everyone involved in the project learns a, a, whole, a whole lot from it. Okay, great. Yeah, so um, why don't we move just back out onto the deck, and uh, is, if there's anything else uh, you wanted to say before we wrap up? I think I think that's about it. I mean, if you guys have any questions or if there's any more uh, Facebook questions. Yeah, and if there are any uh, that we don't get to on the stream, you know, leave your questions in the uh, chat, and we'll get to them afterwards. Um, but, you know, thank you, everybody, for watching. I, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, again... This is uh, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, Sinatra Living House. So I want you all to go and look at the uh, Facebook uh, People's Choice poll. We have a contest where it's an unofficial contest. So we, this is very, very important. This is not going to be uh, for points, but go to uh, the Solar Decathlon Facebook page. You can vote for your favorite Solar Decathlon house. Yeah, so please vote for Sinatra Living. All right. So thank you so much again. Um, and uh, stay tuned. We're going to be going live one more time today uh, and throughout the rest of the weekend with all 11 houses here at Solar Decathlon 2017. It's Matt Dozier with the U.S. Department of Energy signing off.